Hey everyone, welcome back. This video is about part two in our data factory configuration. So what we're doing in this video is we're actually going to configure the pipeline steps and test the pipeline, and then we're going to create an event trigger in data factory to automate the pipeline. So in our previous video, if you remember, we created the data factory, and then we linked our Databricks notebook, our Azure Data Lake storage account, and our Azure SQL database all to data factory. And now we're actually going to configure this, the pipeline steps. So if we go into our data factory here, our display screen again, we'll see that we had the notebook. Uh, and if you remember, this notebook loads in data from a data from the data lake storage folder, the, the raw data. It's going to run the Python script to clean it. And it's going to load it back into an Azure data lake storage account. So uh, what do we want to do next? Well, in our pipeline steps, once it cleans it and uploads it, we want to then have the data lake automatically send that data, that clean data, into an Azure SQL database. So how we do that is you can go to this little arrow, right, for move and transform, click on that, and then left click and then drag this copy data. What this is doing is this, this is an activity that's going to send data from one source to another. So from the data lake storage account to the SQL database. Okay, so we can call this data lake to SQL database. And the source is going to be where is it coming from? And this data set is something we have to create because we have the link to the storage account, but we don't know what file or anything that we're using yet, right? So I click this new button here, scroll down to Azure Data Lake storage account, click continue, and we're working with the CSV file. We're going to continue there. We can call this cleaned data set. The link service is that Azure SQL data storage that we created in the last video. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this, check out the last video to kind of see how we got up to the speed on this here. Uh, and the file path, you can click on this little browse here. It's going to be container 9. And remember, that clean data is going to be uploaded from the notebook into this updated data 3 folder. Then we want to click OK. We do not want to create a file here. I'll explain why. So if we go to our container, that new, I mean, that clean data is going to be uploaded to updated data three. And then this part is this part right now, but if in a couple days or in a week, we update new data into this and send new data and run, run this pipeline again, it's going to overwrite this. And it's going to actually going to create a different number, right? So this part's not going to be the same thing. So we specify this exact path this is actually going to change later on when we update new data, and so it's not going to work. So we actually need to create a dynamic file path. That's why we don't have to specify a file path here. And I'll show you in just a second how to create a dynamic file path that you can use. And again, with our data in the notebook, we don't have a header. Remember, we got rid of the header, and we just are using our regular data. If you have a header in your data set, go ahead and click on that. And we're going to click OK. All right, now, to create the wildfire card path. The first thing you can look at is to preview this right here. Click on that. We can kind of see what we're looking at. So we're looking at, uh, again, no header row here, but just kind of the data. Just kind of a preview of what it's going to be and look like. Uh, and then we can go to our wildcard file path. That's going to create the dynamic file path. Okay, so in the wildcard path, we have our container 9. We have our updated Data 3, again, that's this folder here where the updated data is going to be in. And then our file path, we're going to do P and asterisk. And what this means is in our file, this is always going to start with part. It's always going to start with a P. You see how nothing else starts with a P? So what we're saying is anything that starts with a P and then anything after that, whether it's number you know 39633 or 47825, whatever it is, we want it to load in and use that. So that's a dynamic file path is, is what we just created, which is really, really neat and powerful. Okay. Now we're going to go to our sync. This is where we want to send the data to. And again, we want to create a new data set. So we're going to go to Azure SQL database. Keep this, you can keep this the same or change it wherever you want. We're going to do our database that we created in the beginning, the link service. And our table name is going to be this dbo.data3. 
And again, DBO just means database owner. It's the prefix whenever you're an owner and you create a table. Um, so don't worry about that. You can just click on this here. I'm going to import the schemas and click OK. It's going to do that. And now this next step is this pre-copy script. So this is pretty important. So in our database, right, we don't have anything, any data right now. So the first time you run this pipeline, it's going to up, upload the data into here. But let's say in a couple of days or the next week, whenever we want to run this pipeline again, if we upload data again, it's going to duplicate. It's going to have that second set of data in there, right? In some cases, you might want to do that. But in our case, what we want to have happen is we want the old data to get deleted and then when the new data comes in, before the new data comes in. How do we do that? Well, in this pre-copy script, what we can write is a SQL query. So we can write delete from data3. And again, data3 is our table name that we're having, right? So what this is saying is this will actually run before the new data gets uploaded in. It's actually going to delete all the old data uh, except for the header row before the new data comes in. So this is really powerful as well. So you can create some stored procedures or you can create some pre-copy things that will run before your data comes in. Okay, the next thing we want to do is hit mapping. I want to hit this import schemas. So this is saying that we want the data lake schema to match the SQL database schema. We want to make sure that those are the same and it's going to be loaded in correctly. So this is saying it's a string, right? And we have this employee name, employee number, right? And again, uh, that's these columns right here. And we're saying it's going to come in as a varchar integer, right? So this is perfect. So we want that to happen. All right. And now we go to this. And now how do we make sure that once this notebook runs, or once we're in this pipeline, that then it then goes to this next step? What you do is you go to this little green box and drag it into here. All right. Now what this is saying, this is the success activity. Right, right here. This is saying that once this notebook successfully runs, I want you to then go to this and take that clean data in the data lake storage and upload it into Azure SQL database automatically. Right, you can also click on failure here. So if for some reason this thing failed, we can go, we can click another, you know, pipeline part down here where it would email you or another function. Right, and to delete this, you just hover over it, right click and hit delete. Okay, so now we're pretty set up here. Now what we want to do is we want to debug this. We actually want to test this pipeline. So we're going to hit this debug up here. And it's actually going to run the pipeline uh, and test it for us. Okay, so you can see that the pipeline ID is run right here. You can see that it's right now being queued, the duration, how long it's taking, the pipeline run activity again. And this is going to change. Uh, we're just going to say like in process or in progress. Right? And this is going to change a little bit up here once it starts. So is it in progress? And it changes here. And then if you hover over, it's hidden right now, but if you hover your mouse over this, you can click on this input path. It's going to say we're running it from notebook 11. Right, that's the notebook that we're running. That's the input path that we're doing. And you can click on this little glasses here. And you can click on this and actually see it running in real time, which is really, really cool. So you can see that Databricks succeeded. That notebook actually succeeded. Okay, you can see that the commands ran, how long they took, right? You can see if there's any errors in here, if you had any errors. It would show you here if you had errors too. Uh, click on that. So it said that Databricks now succeeded, and this now succeeded. So the pipeline test successfully succeeded. So let's go to our database here. And now let's run this again. Remember, we didn't have any data here before. Well, let's run this. Our updated clean data has now been updated automatically. It's kind of neat, huh? Uh, the last thing that I'll mention is uh, the last step we want to do is create an event trigger in Data Factory to automate the pipeline. And what an event trigger is, is instead of us, whenever we upload data into that data lake storage, right, we want, instead of having us go into Data Factory and then run this pipeline manually every single time, we want this to happen automatically. So what we can do is we can go to this add trigger. And what a trigger is, is just executing your pipeline, right? So we can, if we hit trigger now, it'll run the pipeline again, okay? We actually want to go to new and edit, and we can add a trigger. And there's different types. So we're going to click on new here, and you can type any name you want to. And there's three different types of triggers you can create. There's schedule. So this means that uh, I want this pipeline to run 
you know, uh, every, you know, 60 minutes, you can put 60 here or every hour or how many days or like every once every month, right? It's on a schedule. So you can say every Friday, I want this pipeline to run. You can put an end date, you can put no end date, whatever you want to do. The next one is a tumbling window. This is saying that I want this to reoccur every 15 minutes or, you know, 30 minutes or, you know, three hours, right? So just constantly reoccur and keep running if you needed to do that. Again, no end date, on date. Um, and this last one is the one that we're actually going to use. This is an event. Uh, and what this is going to do is we're going to pick our storage account name. So remember, it's data lake NJL7. And our container name is going to be container9, right? Okay, in the acceptable format, you have to have this little slash. Okay. Okay, you have those two little slashes there. And again, that's this container 9, our data lake storage, and then updated data 3, right? So updated, blob path begins with updated data 3. Actually, I'm sorry, we want to use our raw data. So we actually want to do this folder 9, right? So when we upload data, any new data, we're going to upload it to this data.csv, okay? So you want to do this uh, folder 9, and then slash, you can do data.csv. So what we're going to do is in here, we have our data. Now, if we want to overwrite this, right, we can click on upload. Uh, let's say we... we Let's say we changed our data locally, right? So we can go to our data here, and it's data.csv again. You can click this overwrite if the file already exists. So if it's the same name, you can click on this overwrite, and then if we updated our data, it'll overwrite this. That's what we're going to do with AZ Copy. So whenever we upload data, it's going to overwrite this file. And when it overwrites this file, it's going to trigger this event right, in Data Factory saying that a new blob was created. And this works with overwritten files too, not just new ones. So it actually is going to work perfectly for us. And again, we're saying it's this file path. So what we're saying is when a updated data.csv file gets uploaded to there and overwrites the old file, then it's going to trigger this and it's going to run this pipeline. So we're going to hit continue, continue, and click OK. So now it's going to run that. And so once a new data gets uploaded here, it's going to run this notebook, and take that raw data, clean it, move it into this, and then clean that. And that's the pipeline. So that's pretty neat, huh? So, uh, yeah, that really wraps it up for this video here. Uh, join me in the next video. And we're going to go over the whole pipeline again uh, and kind of make sure we wrap everything up. Um, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. The last thing you want to do is once you do all this, you want to hit this publish all. And you want to do this because this is actually going to save all of your changes, right? You want to actually publish this. If you don't publish this and you get out of it, it's actually going to delete uh, and not save any of this stuff. So you actually want to make sure you publish your changes. Uh, that's very important. Uh, and then say it's going to publish whatever changes or anything you updated in there. So it's going to save everything. And yeah, once that's complete, uh, you have your pipeline up and running. Uh, join me again in the next video, and we're going to wrap everything up, and I'll show you the overall pipeline one more time and uh, go over everything. All right, thanks again.